Hey guys, Chris here. Uh, a couple things I wanted to uh, go over, and that's uh, NAS and software and some of the more common ones that you'll probably be looking at if you yourself are looking to build a NAS unit. So the main two that you will probably go ahead and look at yourself, just like me when I was going through and setting things up and looking at things, is FreeNAS and Unread. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into it and what the pros and cons are to each and what my final thoughts are. So let's start with Unraid. So pros to Unraid, and one of the biggest things of why I went with it and why I continue to use it, is you can use any combo of size drives that you want. So you can, especially someone first starting out, this is a great idea and a great reason as to why I use it. So as an example, I have quite a lot of drives in my system. I obviously didn't start that way, but you would want your biggest drive to be your parity drive, and then you can have any amount of data drives that you want. So as an example, currently in my main system, I'm still doing a couple upgrades, keep in mind, but I have a combination of eight terabyte and four terabyte drives. Now, personally myself, due to the fact that I run a 12 drive array, I have two drives for parity, and what parity means is basically it is metadata that is stored to rebuild a drive if a drive fails. That way you can go ahead and put a new drive in, take the failed drive out, and it will use the parity drive to rebuild said failed drive. So really simple, really easy, very low maintenance, and there isn't a really expensive upgrade path. Um, it's bare metal. And what that means is there's no underlying operating system that is needed, like Hyper-V or some of these other software that you have to run something on top of it in order to get storage, like storage spaces, something of that nature. Um, with uh, Unraid and with FreeNAS, usually you are using a USB drive that has the actual software installed that you boot off of. And then the drives are used for the storage itself. Now, Unraid does have a really good um, app store, though there is not really a lot of apps, but one of the first things that you'll end up doing once you install and log in after you get it configured is you'll download what's called the Community App Store, which is basically a huge community of lots of support, lots of act. There is lots of action, there is lots of development, and there is a lot of applications constantly being made and constantly being updated. So really, really good store to use and has a tremendous amount of apps and a community behind it. Uh, does have the option to run Docker containers very easily right out of the gate. And you can also go as far as creating manually from scratch using your own. Uh, really easy to use, a lot better opinion uh, in that aspect as well for me my, personally myself. Uh, one of the cons that you will hear quite a bit about is Unraid natively does not use ZFS. Now that ZFS, you might ask what that is, that is another type of Linux file system that is used and it does not have native support, meaning you will not have active snapshots for your data and virtual machines as well. Now, if it was to use ZFS through Unraid, basically then you wouldn't be using Unraid because the main advantage of Unraid over ZFS is the fact that you could use any drive possible and the upgrade path is not as expensive, basically. Um, also, a lot of people, especially the huge ZFS nut community, will say that the parity building is old and archaic because it basically it's using a RAID, essentially RAID 5 or 6, depending on how many parity drives that you have in your array. So moving over to FreeNAS. Now I have used both in the past. I am not being paid to make any decision whatsoever. These are just my opinions and what I have seen and what I consider pros and cons. So do keep that in mind. Now, pros with FreeNAS is it will use ZFS out of the gate. Um, one of the things that I do have to say about FreeNAS is there is a larger understanding that is needed due to the fact that it is using a ZFS file system, and it's not quite as easy to just pick up and get going with things. 
Uh, also, as I said previously with FreeNAS and Unraid, both of them do use a thumb drive for the installation so you don't have to waste A, another drive, or B, a SATA port or SAS, whatever the case may be, for the operating system, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, one of the things that I also forgot to mention as well, and I apologize, is Unraid, you will have licensing, depending on how many drives that you are using. As an example, myself, I'm using a 12 drive array, so anything over nine, I believe it was, is $130, but that is a one-time fee that will travel with the thumb drive itself. Now, FreeNAS, when it has no licensing. However, due to the fact that you are using ZFS, um, basically with the ZFS nut community, and something that is highly recommended with how ZFS works, you will have to look into that if you have more questions. There's lots of information out there. I will put links in the descriptions as well, as you will want to use ECC error checking memory because of how ZFS and the file system works. Now, one of the pros and cons to FreeNAS is it does use ZFS. However, with ZFS, as I stated previously, the upgrade path is more costly, and what I mean by that is, as an example, if I remember correctly, this is quite a while, quite a few years ago at this point. Now, do keep in mind, it's a great product. It's an awesome product. It's amazing, but the upgrade path is more expensive. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have, as an example, six three terabyte hard drives. So you're going to use do Z1. And what that means is you will have one drive parity and five drives for data. Let's say they are all six three terabyte drives. Okay, so now at this point in time, my drives have filled up. One thing with Unraid that you were able to do is you could just slap in a, a bigger drive in, let it build, come back in a few hours, you're done. ZFS, if you were to take, let's say, two of the three terabyte drives and replace with a six terabyte drive. You will not get that space of those extra three terabytes until the whole entire pool has been upgraded from three terabyte drives to six terabyte drives. So you're basically replacing two drives for a couple hundred dollars a piece, whatever the, what you end up buying. And you are not getting that space until you do all six. That gets costly when you're somewhere in the six to 10 plus data drive range. That gets really, really super expensive. And that's one of the drawbacks that I find, especially in the personal life, I can understand in the business life because it's a very great solid product. But in the personal life, that's just too expensive for me. I'm running almost 80 terabytes with 10, eight terabyte drives at this point in time. I'm, I'm getting there, I have a few more upgrades to do. But that gets really super expensive when you're looking at 100 to $200 a pop and you don't even get to see the space until you go ahead and upgrade every single drive in the pool. Now there's ways around that. You can go ahead and create smaller virtual devs, which is basically a smaller hard drive pool in FreeNAS. But then you're losing space because you're dedicating a parity drive to each or you're possibly in, if you don't have a parity drive, a failover drive essentially if you don't have one when you create those smaller pools like let's say you did um, two three terabyte pools and you did three of those and then you combine them all together yes you can do that but a you're getting less space and you're wasting drives for the parity drives so again it makes the upgrade path a lot more expensive and that's one of the drawbacks that I find so basically, to sum it up, final thoughts, I mean, I used FreeNAS for a year or two. Great product, but I was getting to the point where I was having to upgrade drives, and it was just, it was going to cost too much. I mean, I'm, I can't, every time I want to upgrade my FreeNAS server and get more storage, I can't go and spend $1,000 on drives. I just don't make that kind of money. I wish I did. So I went ahead and moved on and moved over to Unraid. And that's currently where I'm sitting and I actually have two Unraid servers at that point. So, I mean, basically it's really up to you and how much you value your data and what path works for you. Now I'm not saying that one method is greater than the others. There's also, 
lots of other software out there that I have tried, but these are the two main ones that I would consider using for my own personal benefit. I will leave links in the descriptions of more information. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks and have a good day.